Hello and welcome to Stephen Mendy's videos. Thanks for watching my educational videos. In today's video, we're going to look at this op amp with a capacitor across one of the resistors. Now, the presence of capacitors in the op amp is easily handled in the Laplace domain. It, it reduces what would normally be a differential equation into a simple algebraic expression. So, let us have a look at what we would normally do if we did not have the capacitor there. Normally, when we have two resistors arranged in this manner, with the input being fed into the negative input of the op amp, we use the simple expression V out equals minus R2 over R1, which is the gain times V in. So that's what we would do if it was just resistors. And you can easily go back and watch my early op amp videos to see how that one was derived using normal KVL or KCL. So now, the, how does the presence of the capacitor affect our behavior in the op amp system? Well, the next thing we notice is that R1 is in parallel with C. Now, if it was just two resistors in parallel, we would use the formula for two parallel resistors, R1 times R2 over R1 plus R2. Now, it turns out that when we're dealing with complex impedances, which is Z, we would normally uh, have the same approach because the only difference between R and Z is that Z has in the complex numbers because of the presence of the capacitor and or coil inductance, really. So writing out our R1 times R2, R1 plus R2, and um, using 1 over Cs, which is that's the impedance of a capacitor in the Laplace domain, uh, we simply replace the R2 for, for the capacitor with 1 over Cs. And uh, lo and behold, it's simple. You can follow that. And now all we have to do is some fancy algebra on it. As you can see, similar to what we did with the transfer function, we cancel out the Cs and our impedance of C in parallel with R1 is R1 over R1 times Cs plus 1. So now all we have to do is to put that into the denominator of our normal op-amp equation. So we're going to have V out equal to minus R2 over this thing that we've just finished calculating times R1. So let's do that quickly. And in order to turn it into a transfer function, we simply need to divide by the V1. And that's done like this. You have GS equal to V2S over V1S output over input. And we have merely tidied up so that we have minus R2 times R1 CS plus 1 over R1. So you, you should be able to do that now, having watched so many of our videos before. In fact, you just flip. You just flip the denominator and multiply. Okay? So there's your answer, and we've got our transfer function for the circuit. And uh, you can see clearly that that denominator is just our resistor and capacitor in parallel. Isn't electronics wonderful? Thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next video.